We bought six Ethernet cables today. Should we do an unboxing? What do you mean no one cares? They're Ethernet cables. They, you know, they each came in their own box. It was like an Amazon basics thing. I thought it was exciting. Oh, what do you think is exciting? See, I don't play golf. That's where we have a disconnect. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And today we are going to take a look at, we're going to revisit the cloud PKI and look at some cool things we could do with it in terms of custom compliance. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how to play golf. I've done miniature golf, but I'm assuming that's not the same thing. Why aren't we talking about the Amazon cables? Okay, last week we got to take our first look at Cloud PKI from Intune, which is really cool and uh, been getting some interesting response from it from folks. So uh, I want to follow up on two things first um, before we move on to what we're going to talk about today as kind of like a second step. Like, what do we do with it now that it's there? So the first is um, if we go back to tenant administration and go to cloud PKI, um, we're going to go to our issuing CA. So you can see we talked about this briefly, the leaf cert, cert status. Okay, so you can see what's active. You can also see expired and revoked. Um, if I go to view all certificates, I get to look at essentially everything that that has been deployed with that SCEP profile. Um, so we can see it's been deployed to my cloud PC. Um, we could see the username of the machine that has it. So this is everything that's been deployed and active and I can revoke some. Um, another way you can do this is by looking at the profile itself. So if I go to Windows, configuration profiles and we go look for the skep profile um, we'll be able to see the certificates here so if i go to a device um, i'm going to take jesse's device i like to poke at it and i go down to device query um, i can search for it so i could do certificate and actually before i do that if i just run the certificate command it's gonna give me a, an inventory in real time of all the certs and you can see there's quite a lot and i could go through and find my cert but what I want to do is I want to say where the issuer contains Rubik's dev. So these are all my certs, but now I want to, I want to focus in on the skep one. So I know that came from the issuing uh, CA. So I'm going to run it again. Rubik's dev issuing and there we go I can confirm it that way too but here's a question is how do we take action on this right so what I want to talk about today is I want to shift gears to custom compliance right and I want to take a look at how we can uh, acknowledge that so I want to take a look at how we can use the PKI certs and custom compliance and kind of put them together as a way to check if devices have it and, you know, use that for authentication into things with conditional access. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to devices. We're going to go to compliance. And if you recall previously, we did some custom compliance policy. Um, and to do that, we have to do our scripts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a script. So we're going to start here. We're going to say skip policy, uh, compliance policy to ensure skip certificate is on device. Okay. And what's our detection script, right? So here's what we're going to do. We are going to come in here, desktop. Uh, we might as well just say new. We're going to say skip compliance. Oh skip compliance dot ps1 why start organizing now um and we could do this in code okay so first thing we have to do is check for that cert so what i'm going to do is actually let me go to a reference machine here so if i go to powershell ice and this is a machine where I clearly do have the cert. So how can I look for it? So what I can do is I could say the cert is get child item path 
certs, local machine, my, that's the personal store. I can say where the object, uh, issuer matches Rubik's dev issuer. Let's see what that comes back with. Nothing. What did I do wrong? Match. Rubix div issuing, I think. Oop. There we go. So you see it comes back with that's the cert. Thumbprint and the subject. We can test for that. So we could say if cert. Just to show you here, we could say write host. The cert is here. Else, write host. The cert is not here. And if I run this, it says the cert is here. And just to show that that works, I'm going to add the exclamation point to do the inverse. All right, cool. So that works, but what can we do with that? So we can actually write a, a script that does something similar, and we're going to create a value called skep certificate is present. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a second. So we're going to say cert equals um, get child item path. Uh, we're going to do cert local machine my where object issuer matches Rubik's dev issuing and now we'll say if cert exists so actually what we'll do is we'll actually declare this false first Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll say if the cert is there, then that will be equal to true. Uh, I forgot the equal sign. Can't forget that. Okay. Now that we have that, we're able to take our output and say it is equal to skip certificate is present although we don't need the dollar there because that's going to be the name of the setting and what we'll do is we'll say that equals skep certificate is present because that's ultimate that's going to be json um that's the output and then we return the output return output and then convert to JSON and compress. So that'll give us the value. I say I think like I haven't done it a million times. Okay, let's go with that. No, no, 64 bit. Okay. Create. All right, great. So now what we can do is we can create a policy for Windows and it'll be uh, there we go. Say skip certificate compliance policy. And this is going to be custom. And we're going to choose our script. And now we need the JSON file. Okay. So let's go back and let's make another folder. We call it skip compliance.json. Okay, and we're gonna open this in here as well. So for JSON, we're gonna follow the same formula as last time. It is rules. Uh, so we are gonna say we need the setting name and the setting name is going to be the value. So it's going to say skip certificate 
is present. Okay, so it's going to be this one. Get certificate is present, comma. Oh, did I miss something? Yes, I missed another. I missed that actually. There we go. Uh, we need the operator. It's gonna be uh, equals. The data type, because it's true or false, is going to be a boolean. Actually, I think that's is equals boolean. And now we have to do our operand, which is going to be what we want it to be. And in JSON, that should just be true. Okay. We have to add our more info URL. And these are just things Microsoft requires. So we're going to say HTTPS, get rubix.com. Uh, and then we're going to say remediation strings. And these are going to contain two things. So it's going to be language and underscore US. The title is uh, basically going to explain what we're doing. It's going to say a skip certificate from Intune is required. Description is about the same thing. Skip cert must be present on device. And that's the end of that. I think that's it. We'll give it a shot. Okay. Yep. Skip certificate is present is equal to true. Let's go ahead. And you would assign this to your uh, users or devices. All right. So that's created. And we can take a look at what it's looking for. Skip cert is present is equals true. Cool. So this is just one interesting way we could start using the cloud PKI skip certs to enhance things like our compliance, right? I know if you were to take a look at if you had a, uh, like a critical app and you wanted to protect it with conditional access and had to meet, maybe you apply this to some users uh, outside of your you know, standard compliance policy, that's a great way to start acting on it today. And we'll be seeing you. Five, four, three, two.